Um, hello. Um, good evening for everyone who are in Asia. Um, good afternoon for everyone in Europe. And good morning for people who are in someone else. So it is my honor to uh, moderate the second Young Scholar Symposium for 2022nd Digital Futures event. So um, this is the second section um, in this weekend, followed by um, the first one, which was um, around like 12 hours ago uh, with advanced fabrication and robotics. We are on the topic of AI and human machine interaction. So just a little bit um, introduction for the next two um, sections. Um, tomorrow we have the hybrid forms and virtual architecture and um, followed by innovative structures and materials. So please um, um, uh, take a look at the information on both Bilibili and YouTube or register from the QR code um, to join the Zoom um, web webinar. So for this session, we have, um, we have the pleasure to welcome Professor um, Wei Li Kai from Tsinghua University and also um, Giovanna Priscilla from um, OLI, Online Architecture um, University. So before we head to the session, I would like to express um, the gratitude um, for Tongji University, the Architectural Society of Shanghai, China, Digital Futures, and also the academic support from UIA. So um, uh, Professor Wei is the Deputy Director of Institute of Future Human Habitats Research Platform in Tsinghua University. He is also a national first class registered architect, as well as urban and rural planner, const um, constructor, and also a committee member of the Computational Design Academic Committee of the a ASC, the Architectural Society of China. He got his PhD degree in Tianjin University, served as visiting scholar of Technical University of München, and has also published a series of papers in um, CAAD and Architectural Journal in China. His research interests mainly focus on architectural computational design and also robotic wear fabrication. Um, our second uh, speaker today, Giovanna um, Priscilla, is an artist and also a co-founder of the online lab of architecture. She is currently teaching at the University of Sciences and Arts of Latin America, UCAL. Um, she has been uh, exhibited and also featured in a lot of magazines and also with other awards. Uh, one of the prize is with the OLA, is the Virtual Space Curatorial Project by Foundation Telefoncia. Um, she has also exhibited um, globally, including the Museum of Contemporary Art, Archica, Archidaily, and also um, other architectural design magazines. So before we head to um, the, the session from the speakers, I would also like to share the news that the first issue of Architectural Intelligence uh, will soon launch on uh, June 26. So the Architectural Intelligence is a peer reviewed journal for original research papers focusing on the three feature scenarios of smart habitat, virtual habitat and space habitat and emerging digital technologies in the whole life cycle of architecture including design, simulation, optimization, construction, operation, and inhabitation. So um, Professor Philip Yuan is the editor-in-chief. Uh, so please um, uh, follow the news of the architectural in intelligence on the website um, to receive the 
um, the, the publicated issue. So I think without um, um, further ado, um, I would like to welcome uh, Professor uh, Wei Li Kai for uh, his uh, lecture. Yeah. I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Everything okay? Yeah. See my screen? Okay. So, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. First, I um, am very glad and honored to be invited here to give a, a lecture called Architectural Design as a Science. Um, it is on the dimensionality reduction and direct wave theory of architectural computation. Um, this might be a serious topic, maybe not that funny and interesting, not that uh, with, that, with those uh, animations like most of the AI technologies. But this is also my concern that we are now at the crossing of um, architectural design or architectural AI. Um, I have think about this question, this topic for over almost 10 years um, because of uh, the embarrassments and challenges in front of us now. There are several of them. The first one might be the highly competitive and intensive design versus low added value and less conviction of re results. Most of the time, the architect and the designer will do a lot during their um, early stage design. But it is also quite uh, easily to be negative. So this is, uh, uh, this, this is very embarrassed for an architect. And it, it is also not, not good, of course, for the whole profession. This is the first one. And second one is um, AI now is everywhere else, it's ex except the architectural design maybe versus traditional and ancient way in our design and construction practice. Why we can't apply AIs well in the design and construction practice? That's the second embarrassment. And third one is uh, maybe the most important one would be, there has been 60 year, 60 year research on the architectural computation and over 1000 tools were developed on CAAD, but now architectural AI is still few and far between. Why, what's the reason and what we should do? This is the third one. And fourth and five, fifth one would be, where we are cultivating students to, be, to, to use intelligent, intelligent technology in school, but will this intelligence be useful on site in the design company or on the construction site. And the fifth one, we all know that architects and workers is running off. And how could we reach a sustain, sustainable development of future human habitats? I think this question is, is very, very big and also very serious and even boring, but I, this is my concern. So my topic will start from these questions today. What do we need concerning all the questions just now? Do we need a science, but not a specific technique involving computation and robots for the future architecture? Why it should be a computation? Why the science of design requires computer? Will traditional design afford to be a, pros a process of science? Maybe this is, this is what, I'm, what I just talked about just now. Designs to be negative, that's the reason. Of, of most of the time we have, um, we should have several designs for the governors, for the clients, and they could negative each of them or all of them in, real, in, in a minute. And we should support, what, support more and more. That's the very embarrassment. So, what if design is not what meant to become? Well, it is always to be negative, 
till the last second before it comes to real. That means that we, if we need 1,000 or 10,000 design, we should, unless we get the best one, or at least we think we get the best one. So will it be just an accident of history for human to do the design work? Because this is not humanity to do the design work. That's why so many designers, so many architects will run out. So if we need 10,000 or more than 10,000 computed designs, computation would be, of course, the inevitable form of design as a science. So let's look back to those questions and in person. The first one will be explained, explained by the computation. Because we don't have the right or the appropriate computation tools, and we still need traditional and ancient way to, to do the design, and we can't generate practical design. We can't generate 10,000 practical designs at one time. And so that's why where the, all the designs are all, most of the design will be negative. And uh, maybe over 100 famous design company will rush into Shenzhen for one tiny project. This is the, one, the first question. And the reason is computation. The second one, AI as well. Let's look at the design process. The design generates through from our thoughts. And through design, we can create human creation like art, like urban architecture, like machine, and so many things, so many more things. And still the environment, the human creation will feed back the thought and we'll get more design. So we are, what we're using now is just the technology of design. We use the, the robots, we use the computer, and even some um, computer um, algorithms to generate design. They are all the technology. What is the science? Technology will, will be naturally pushed forward, downward, from thought to design, from design to human creation, to di different branches. But the science will be traced back to the top, to the thought, because I believe all the design work is done in human mind from human thought, because human thought is the form of the shape. And all the motivations of our human wor world is, is in our thought. And we, we, we use this thought to create human creature which is appearance of the motivation. So in my opinion, to reach a science of design, we should trace back, back from design to thought. So this is um, the second question. Let's look, look to AI, the design, the science of design will, will, will rely, rely on computation. So AI will be needed. Let's look AI, there are several Definitions of AI during different periods of history. Um, from uh, Minsky's human with intelligence and from Nielsen a science about knowledge for a long time. And now um, it is uh, simplified as perceive, cognize, decide, and execute like human. And also the AI is also um, could be separated or simplified as several um, phase or symbolism, connectism, behavior and so on. But I think these are not enough for today. Today AI should be including two things. The first one is machine intelligence, which has been, has most, mostly been achieved by our technologies today. But the second one, human intelligence, it is not even touched now. About the machine intelligence, the AI maybe what oranges from the Turing test, but it's just a text test. And now we know we have the Winograd scheme challenge. It is, it is also uh, a text test, 
But considering co-reference resolution, like the example down, the fish at the warm, it was hungry, which is eight, but it's still on the text level. What, what's next? What's the, tech, what's the text should be on the thought level? Just we mentioned for design, what we should, what we need for the thought in AI. We need the human intelligence. In machine intelligence, we can, we can achieve calculating, navigating everything based on rules of technology, a specific technology. For human intelligence, for design, we should rely on human intelligence. That should, according to the rules of thought, and that is the science process of the design. But what is the rules of our thought? This is the question. And what is the rules of our architectural design thought? thought? This is also what we, shall, what, what we shall discuss later. And the third one, the second one, we should include with the human thought. It's because the traditional, uh, it's because the design and fabrication way in design rely on human thought. Well, other AI technology, they will not rely on human thought so much. That's why the second embarrassment, embarrassment or challenge exists. The third one, let's look at the third one. We have experiencing 60 years architectural computation search from even Sutherland from 1963 who was uh, both the father of uh, CG and VR and even metaverse. But th this, in my opinion, this is not architectural computation research. This is um, um, the technology of CG or uh, some side research. And architectural computation research should be like this. It's uh, from Rang Durang, 1802. This is, of course, a human computation, but this might be the origin of uh, architectural computation in the history. And what happens to the last, to the past 60 years about on this field, about architectural computation? I have uh, collected and uh, investigated over 2000 related papers published in several famous conferences and journals. And uh, more than 10, 000, uh, more than 1,000 methods and tools were found in their paper. They were proposed, what a pity, they were proposed and developed separately. I think this is, is a very serious problem during the past 60 years. Of course, they have do many um, ex explorations on the uh, architectural computation field, but Almost, almost all of them will not be connected to each other. I've also talked with um, our un unofficial um, group in Ikadi uh, called Shape Grammar Group with uh, um, Bedal, Rosé, and Jose Duat. Um, they also agree with this, why these tools are not connected, are proposed separately. I have uh, investigated uh, almost all the tools and I found that they can, they can be um, uh, summarized into seven parts and maybe more than seven, but seven main, main branches, such as the layout grammar, which occupies um, almost one third of the research tools and space grammar, spatial grammar, almost one fourth and also circulation, form, structure, elevation, and element. As you can see, um, although most of them, over 60% of them were developed based on ship grammar, but ship grammar is not uh, sustainable. It's not developable. What we should have is a, it's a research system like this all the tools, all the methods could be connected, could be um, augmented based on the tools before. And they could uh, organize 
a whole system for the architectural computation, the architectural AI. But the truth is they are all separated. They are not related, not reusable, and not synthesized. Of course, not developable. Um, so this reminds me the 10th, 10th grading, which is the, the, the one, one of the most, um, one, one of my most interest, interested structure um, by Fuller, Buckminster, Buckminster Fuller. 10th grading contains string, module, merge, and open character. This is a metaphor for our research. Each stick could be referred as a tool or, or a um, an aspect of architecture. All the aspects should be related to form an practical architectural design. And all the tools should be reusable because they are made of module. And tools and tools could be synthesized and could be developed to a, to a big system to help the whole um, design profession. I have tried the tense graded structure in my undergraduate study um, 15 uh, or 16 years ago. It is a hemisphere tense graded fabrication based. The first trial, first test is a failure because it is based on a single stick, just like the tool separate, separately, just like the, the phenomenon now. And the second test, I tried to uh, fabricate the tense graded based on three stick units, a module. So I succeed, succeeded to, um, to, to add modules one by one to form a bigger structure. And then I um, assemble them horizontally and turn it, uh, rotate it 90 degree. And finally, a tense gradient hemisphere is fabricated successfully. I think this is um, very, uh, very like, the, um, very similar to the research, current research situation now. That all the research is not related and all the aspects of architecture, such as the um, ground floor, the spatial, spatial, uh, spatial relation, the elevation, the structure, the form, they are not related. They are researched, they are calculated separately. And of course, no synthesis will be made. So the three question would be uh, the most important, I think. Uh, in uh, in today's um, today's uh, today's today today's presentation, and the fourth and five would be the education and practice. We can discuss it later. So let's also uh, look look back, look look our look at our um, practice now. Um, it is uh, um, the design studio uh, done, uh, directed by Professor Xu Weiguo. Um, based on algorithms from computer field. And also Matthias, um, based on the CN and the style transfer to generate um, urban plan and design, urban planning and design through a texture of city and a style, a certain style. Of course, this, we, this is very interesting and this is very uh, quick to reach an AI result. And I also uh, admire the, the, uh, the tremendous result of the generation. But are they useful? Are they, can they contribute to our um, practical design uh, profession? This is a question. So altogether, the three questions, computation, human thought, related and synthesis, will conclude a scientific design process. It should be um, orienting the human thought and using computation technology and establishing ma methods of how, how the, each aspect of architecture should be related to each other and realize the architectural synthesis 
with real-time human machine interaction. This is the conclusion from the uh, analyze just now. And this is a very complicated system, of course. Architecture might be the most complicated human thought system among all. I have uh, listed almost all the, um, the battles, all the contradictions of human thoughts, um, such as rational, rationalism and empiricism, top-down, bottom-up, structuralism, and so on. Um, this is so complicated. What I, we will come back to it later. To it later. Um, we are going to um, summarize what, what is important is that the relation and the synthesis. And we'll come back. We'll come back here later. And these are our two main characters today: the architectural dimensionality reduction and direct wave theory. The architectural dimensionality reduction, uh, or in Chinese called uh, Jian Zhu Jiang Wei. Um, dimensionality reduction is uh, methods from mathematics or computer. Um, it's just because the architecture is so complicated that we will have to um, collapse the, collapse, make, make the architecture collapsed into pieces. And we, we research the relation between each piece, between each pair of pieces. That's why we propose the dimensionality reduction. So how can we collapse? An architecture. We should know what is architecture first from a scientific way rather than an aesthetic point of view. What is architecture? These two images is the last one, left one is from Genius Lauchi. Uh, it is an African thatched cottage. It's very um, ancient with the natural materials, handmade and rural emotional, and also very fragile. And the one on the right is uh, printed by Professor Xu's team with a um, robotic arm, a concrete 3D printing uh, book house in Shanghai. What's the difference between, between these two architectures? They, of course, they are, all, they are both architecture. What's the difference? Are they same or not? We, we can also come back to this comparison later. Now, let's look at the description of architecture in history from the virtual views to Saint-Paul to uh, Corbusier and to now. In nowadays, what could be architecture um, described from a computation view? Fortunately, we have the works during the past 60 years, thanks to those researchers. They have, they have summarized um, the type or the classification of our, from a computation point of view. Because it is, it is uh, relatively simple to develop a grammar on a, a single on a single aspect, just like a layout or a circulation or a form. But through the investigation, we can find seven of the seven types would be of the uh, will occupy ninety percent of the all the research. So we can come back to this picture. Are uh, this same? If we consider these two buildings from these seven kind of uh, seven kind of types, are uh, they same? The ancient thatched cottage and with uh, a future architecture, a future building, 3D printing building. So to reach and architectural dimensionality reduction, we should first, the first thing is to 
define the computational dimensions of architecture itself. Now, architecture is um, divided into two parts. The first part is architecture itself because it is computing effective. These seven types, these seven uh, aspects is uh, relatively easy to be um, computed while the architecture outside, like uh, the society, energy, climate, the culture, the aesthetic, they are almost impossible to be calculated. So first, we should have a boundary of what should be calculated and what should be not. So there will be um, on the first level of the dimension, we have uh, seven plus dimensions, thanks to the uh, more than 1,000 researchers for their research, although they are separately. But this helped us to classi classify architecture um, from a computation point of view. And uh, the second mention of the architecture is architectural computational types. This is um, a name originating from architectural typology. And uh, in a computational way, we should, of course, in order to improve the compu computation effectiveness, we should have com architectural computational types. And third level dimensionals would including all kinds of geometrical and typological rules. And this is uh, the computational dimensions. We should define the dimensions before the dimensionality reduction. And now this is a, a diagram showing how to reduce the, the dimensionality. So in the center, it is the architecture itself and seven dimensions. And this is the first level dimension. Second level is the architectural computation type including uh, stone structure, wood, uh, Cartesian, non-Cartesian block, system, flow, and, and so on. This should be developed and uh, added uh, by research researchers in the future. And then different architectural computational types, different types could also be uh, divided into very detailed generating rules. So architecture is not only a geometry, it is not an Im image either. Architecture is a logic, is a relation between these physical rules. We can, we can find a lot of examples now using um, AM, using artificial neural network to generate um, architectural images. Um, this is very, very interesting. But from my point of view, we should use the, um, the, the, the bottom-up ANN from the very, very basic principle, very, very basic um, level of architecture. So this is how an architect architecture itself is uh, dimensionality reduced into a single, a thousand single rules. And now we can come back to the system again. All the constriction listed now, they are, they have a, a, a long time battle between, uh, between these uh, contradictions. And we can summarize them. The left one, the left line is a top down process such as rationalism, tree. From tree to uh, Deleuze's rhizome, from uh, top down to bottom up, from Plato's eidos to atom. It is the human thought, human thought. It is, it is our habit to separate things in nature separately into pieces, it's, it is from Hegel philosophy. And also from this, the pluralism should also be equal to monism. Multi-principles 
should, should just be one principle. From this point of view, you can see the left one is the human thought, human habits. Human will experience, will sense the nature by pieces and form a system, a human thought system. This is the recognized process like this. Human recognized nature from um, a wave of nature and they create a direct system in their mind. This is the recognized process. But the thing that create or the design process is the versus, is the uh, inverse process that human use their direct system to generate ideas, generate actions. Just like we play a violin, we'll not play, put, the, put the string at the right place at one time, but we have ear, we can hear the tone and we can judge, we can uh, modify the, our action to, to, to the right place almost the right place. This is the wave. People will have direct idea, direct will to act, and their action will be disturbed by the nature, will be waved. So this is uh, the so-called direct wave method or theory proposed by, by myself. I have this idea, since uh, 12 years ago, and I dare not to say it. Um, uh, uh, only, um, only one time I published it in um, paper in Architectural Journey, Journal in 2017. Um, during the more than 10 years, I am also looking for the philosophy background for this. The most um, closed philosophy should be the top down and bottom up, but they are different. So I think today I should propose the, uh, uh, these two words, the direct wave in the design or act process and the wave direct process in our recognized process. This is uh, applied also in the uh, both the relation, both the architectural dimensionality reduction and also the synthesis and the generation of architecture. So now we have two plans. Plan A, we use human recognition network we have, and we apply ANN inside to reach the synthesis. Now we have uh, finished the reduction of the dimensionality, and how can we synthesis, synthesize all the basic principles, all the basic rules to generate an architecture? Practical, practically. This is the first plan. And second plan, we have ANN, like what most of the ANN application did now. They just generate a machine recognition network by the machine itself. I think an A is um, preferred for now, in my opinion, because it is easy and it is uh, practical for us to give computer a right network according to human recognition for design. And also only in this way, we could achieve the human machine interaction. But in the ANN dominant process, ANN will generate a black box, we all know that. And interaction will be, in, will be almost impossible. So in my, Research, I prefer plan A. Then next, if we want to um, copy, um, mimic, mimic, uh, copy the uh, design thought from our human mind, we should know what occurs in human mind while architectural design. Actually, during the design, although we are, un we are unconscious, our brain, is uh, relating each dimension, each pair of dimensions, billions of billions of time during the architectural design process. 
this, for example, um, according to the seven dimension or more dimension of architecture, this is the volume. We have uh, several volumes of architecture and uh, um, the architect will, will generate a series of uh, arrangements, spatial arrangements or room arrangements according to the volume. And we'll imagine the circulation of different kind, different type of arrangements and also generate the form in his brain and generate the structure, uh, steel frame or concrete or wood structure. And also uh, the envelope decoration and equipment will be generally um, relatively for uh, experienced architect. And this is maybe the uh, simplest process uh, for a um, practical architectural design. And it is called, it could be called a standard synthesis. Uh, the possibilities of this, this synthesis could be more than 5,000. This is the simplest synthesis process during our um, architectural in our mind. And complex synthesis will be numerous, will be billions of kinds of, um, there are not an order and uh, the architect will connect, will relate each dimension, each aspect of the architecture at will. So it will never stop unless the architecture will find a good design or giving up. So this is um, 42 standard synthesis with two dominances. What is dominance, dominances? Um, we all know that we should, um, during the early stage of design, an architect will have a dominant dimension, dominant idea. Maybe it's a form dominant, or maybe it's a structure, or just uh, like uh, most of the regular architecture, the dominant dimension should be the volume and arrangement. So if we have two dominant, most of the time we only have two because, um, because of human thoughts. Because we, uh, we, because we can, most of the time we can, for most people, we can only connect one exact to the other, to another one. We could not even consider three aspects together. And at last we reach an architectural synthesis from a direct wave process. So this is um, like a like an animal, but this is a process of an architecture, um, but in a computational way. Let's take uh, the simplest uh, synthesis way as example, the human preference. An architect or a new user will interact with the whole system and give a sketch of uh, different uh, several volumes of uh, architecture, architecture, and uh, the system will 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 take this input and generate. This each uh, each line will have two process from top down and from bottom up. This is what we call direct wave process, and this is what it, this is also what is different from most of the design research that we have two directions generate, um, generating together. One is top down and the other one is bottom up. Top down, bottom up, top down, bottom up. And the two process is happening, are happening on each line of the whole system. Of course, wh wh which is top, wh which is down? The first level would be the top, but it is a uh, human preference for this node. So only in this node should be top from this point of view. And for other, for other nodes, only um, from high level to low level, from the arrangement, from the circulation level to the lower level. Um, and also the environment will disturb generating. The environment will be, will be disturbing all the generating process according to uh, human memories, according to uh, laws, regulations, and so on. So it's like animal. 
we have a first impulse, we have a first pulse for the animal, and we can interact with the system anytime we like. Human preference or the human interaction could be happened, could happen 1,000 times during the whole generating process, or maybe not one time. The computer uh, could also generate um, a practical architectural design without any human preference or with 1,000 human preferences. So from this point of view, the science of architectural design or architectural computational design could be concluded as the synthesis process is a set of human preference. And the direct generation of any architectural node from top to down, top down, this direct direction. And the wave disturb of any architecture node. Maybe it's from the environment to the architecture to this animal, to this body. Maybe it's from the downward node. A downward root will also disturb the up level node. And also the wave disturb of any architecture outside factor, such as energy, society, aesthetic, and so on. This is the whole synthesis process. And the result of the synthesis should be a set, including all the dimensions of the first level. This is the result of the, of the generating in a balanced state. And now we reach, we um, simulate, uh, simulate and so-called science, scientific architectural computational design process. And uh, this is a um, very ideal um, and very complicated and also, of course, very difficult um, system to be built. In order to build such kind of system, 24 strong relations should be further investigated um, with the back point such as uh, from the volume to the form. This is strong related, but from the equipment to the volume, this is extremely weak related. So according to this, 24 strong relations could be summarized according to our design experiences. So these 24 relations should be researched. This is the basic research for the uh, so-called the scientific computational process. And that's almost all of the, the process of, uh, of the science of architect design I, I want to introduce today. And uh, to conclude, I should, I would like to propose three key points for the future architecture. The first one would be complete computation. This means related generating among all architectural dimensionalities. I think according to the introduction just now, we can understand this. And second one is also very important, whole process interference. It's uh, based on human and society and will be inferred human will infer all the computation and construction process in real time, both the computational design process and the robotic construction process. And the third one is real robot robotic construction. What is real? Now the robot, most of the robotic is the, also um, digital um, construction or dig only a um, numerical controlled. It is all not real robotic or not uh, ro robotic aware process. So the uh, real robotic construction should be the robots aware and collaboratively processing new materials and elements on site. Thank you. That is all my
presentation and introduction on my ideas. Thank you all. Thank you for giving such a thorough introduction as well as you know try to um, make this I would say almost paradigm based um, approach and show us how you know the theory and also to speculate the future of um, of architecture right either in computational direction or in uh, in AI I think um, as the second speaker, I would like to show some of the um, projects um, from um, both my lab as well as um, my teaching. So <clears throat> um, to give everyone a, an introduction, um, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Applied Arts Vienna. And um, I'm also the co-founder of the Direct Tomorrow Lab, which is um, a laboratory uh, based in Vienna where we do innovative uh, design and research um, um, and also cross-disciplinary. So I think my, uh, my research and my teaching is very focusing on um, simulation, um, mobility, um, robotics. And I would like to um, give today's talk based on scale. So how um, in my research, um, I started to think about this phenomenon, not just in architecture, but also in other scales. So, so I would say the first one is rather a small scale. And the work I'm showing is not mine, it's mine. It's my observation um, for me to understand how we can think about matter, material, intelligence. Um, some of the idea would also, I uh, also saw in, in Professor Wei's talk about how we think about crowd and also uncontrolled behavior. So what, what we see here is, um, is what they call as kilobot developed by Harvard Self Organizing Systems Research Group. Um, they are very cheap um, robots. As you can see, um, usually they develop thousands of them for a certain purpose, right? So for in this case, the robots are in a very low cost because all of them, they follow the same um, algorithm. So how to design this algorithm to make everything um, to make all the robots uh, would collaborate together is super interesting, right? So uh, for the movements, um, they developed how to uh, formulate a shape um, with those robots, for example. And then you can see when robots come together, they would do a little bit edge following and, and transmit the information from one to another one. Because in this case, the robots themselves, they don't know, they are not so intelligent. They don't have, um, you know, a RGB camera. They don't sense the environment. They are not controlled by other signal neither. So what's really important is how they, um, how they make the decision just by their neighbors, right? Just by the robots around them. So as you can see here in the self-assembly algorithm, um, they started to think how they can formulate a shape based on starting position and then with edge follow and, uh, and then the other robots would join to formulate this assembly to complete a shape. Um, so I think for this one, um, what's really inspiring for us is to think about um, things in a small scale, right? The matter, because not everything is intelligent, um, when we operate robots, right? The smallest robot we see every day, probably I would say um, is the clean robot, maybe the Roomba is the kind of the smaller robot we see every day. Um, and on the other hand, I think in this scale, we are also looking at how soft body can embrace um, a certain degree of 
intelligence, right? So in um, in in another lab, um, also in Harvard, they are looking at um, how to learn from these sea creatures in order to create somehow um, an artificial and also um, a robot that reacts to the environment, but in a very small scale. So on the other hand, um, Skylar Tibbetts, um, who, um, who leads the self-assembly lab at MIT, um, they are looking at how to formulate things with um, a logic, with a geometrical order, right? So, so things would start to connect and formulate into larger groups uh, based on a certain uh, geometrical operation. So these are all the inspiration from the you know, small scale projects and how we start to tackle this problem um, when we move to, let's say human scale or robot scale, um, we, we use simulation um, to tackle the problem. So one thing we are very, interested is about the path planning um, because um, being like an architect and also thinking about this problem spatially, we cannot, um, we cannot tackle the problem without the space or without the surface that the robot um, occupied. In here, I would like to point out um, the robot in my speech. Um, is more referencing to the locomotive robot rather than kinematic robot or humanoid robot, right? Because robot is such a bored term. And usually on a sci-fi movie, what you see is humanoid robot, which they look like human or this um, on a Star Wars, like these are other kind of robot. What I'm talking here is more, um, is more referring to robot with large, quantities and then they are more like personal robots that occupy the space with people so for example um like the cleaner robot as Roomba or um also I saw in in a Chinese hot pot uh, restaurant right they like Heidi Lao they already had autonomous robots delivering dishes right so so for architects what's really interesting is how we design the restaurant then, right? Because before we were designing restaurants based on the customer, based on the kitchen, based on how the waiter would deliver the dish. But in this case, we have, when we have robots, we don't need to follow the same logic, right? For the waiter, we would like to shorten the trip, right? So the waiter would, would travel as less as possible um, to deliver something, to make it more convenient and faster. But maybe for the robot, we don't have to follow the same principle. But what is the other principle we need to follow? Like, for, for example, um, the revolving sushi, right? Um, is, it's not robotic, but it's mechanical. You see how a new restaurant um, topology is being formulated when you try to design based on a certain mechanism, which is a conveyor belt mechanism for the revolving sushi. So in, in, in some of um, my research, uh, we are looking at um, how robot would move in a space and think about how we can start to design for robots or design a, a space that, that is both for robot and human. And then to do, in order to do that, we need to understand how robots think, right? That, then that is the artificial intelligence we're talking about. Um, because they are not controlled by people, right? We are not using a um, joystick to control the robot. Um, the, the four principle that defines a robot is it needs to be physical, right? And it's not something in a computer. It needs to um, sense the environment in some sort of way with camera, with LIDAR, with signal, anything. Um, and, and the third is it can react to the environment based on what is the sense and how it reacts, right? As I was saying, the locomotive robots, they are reacting to the environment by moving, by moving themselves. 
And the last one is that they have an autonomous system. They can make their own decision. So they know, okay, I should go left, I should go right, I should go, um, I should stop, I should accelerate my speed. And this is the four principle that makes the robot. It's really important because we want to also in the later chapter, you will see how we, we apply this principle, not on Roomba, not on um, human non robot, but try to apply that on architecture or architectural elements. So in, um, in, in, in um, uh, the first digital future workshop, what I had the students to explore is to use the game engine um, to, to, to think about what's the relationship between human and robots and how they would react. So what you see here is done you know, within, I think, two, two days um, in, 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 the, in the workshop. So the students that didn't have any technical background, they didn't know anything about Unity, um, they don't know much about algorithm, they don't know how to script before. And by applying with this um, game engine, they were, they were able to quickly see, okay, how human and robots can react together and what, what kind of spatial principle um, can we develop from this simulation? So, so you can see here the, um, the circular things are the robot and then the, these capsules are um, human. So the robots, they move in a certain grid and then the human, they are preferably uh, walking in the peripheral space. So, in, um, so simulation is something really important um, uh, in my teaching and also the research. So some of the work I'm showing today are developed in, um, in both UCLA and also the Angovante um, with, with, with um, Professor Greg Lin and also my other colleagues. So I won't take all the credits, but what you see here is, um, is somehow um, the interesting work developed in our studio. So how, um, so after we learn how to simulate, the next question is um, how it can help us to think, right? Or how it can help us to design. So what's really important is we need to give um, the agents, right? The agents can mean human, can, can mean robots, can be air par particles, can be cars, can be um, other abstract things. But once you define the agents, in this case is a human, like how can you use simulation to advance your design or provide other um, solutions in the design? So it's not about, so in this case, what we're doing is not about just um, build a building and then uh, throw some of the agents in the building and see what happens. We need to have a very clear um, mind, like what is what we want to do with the simulation, what we want to investigate in here. So in this project, um, the student was looking at the bottleneck problem in the space, which means sometimes in the space you have very narrow um, enfilade or very narrow entrances where you cause the problem, right? You don't want to have this, especially during the COVID, right? This project was developed like two, two years ago uh, when COVID was, when global pandemic was uh, pretty severe. So he was thinking how um, to solve this bottleneck problem. The, and then the way to do it is to really develop architecture as, as puzzles. And then, which means, you know, you, you put different programs in here, like bars, gyms, shops, exhibition space, and then you define different characters for the agents, and then let the computer to run, to simulate. This would be how um, the occupants would take over the space when, when, when it is really happening, right? Of course, a simulation is not a forecast or a prediction. It is a... Uh, let's say it is an uncontrollable or unforeseeable um, operation based on very strict rules as well as principles. So in this case, um, um, we did the simulation together as um, 
with human and also with air. So we are trying to think about how to organize the program based on human occupancy, as well as in here, what you see um, is the CFD simulation, the, um, the, the fluid dynamic simulation um, to simulate how the air would travel the space. So in this case, um, the students, they were, they were designing the space based on the feedback, right? Um, from, from the simulation, like when there's more people or there's more um, contaminated air. So this is a project um, by our diploma students, Ani Dai. Um, I think this would, will also be featured on one of the publication or one of the symposium from um, Tongji University in the summer. So, um, so what uh, the student was doing is to think about how to arrange the wall um, with uh, machine learning behavior. So the ambition was to think about architectural uh, paradigm, right? And here we can see a lot of um, cross interest from um, the previous lecture that how we think about space, how we, how we develop this dichotomy and how from a very simple ray casting um, simulation we can we can see we, we can develop another sort of plan. So in here you see what it, what's happening is just a simple wall movement based on how long what's the duration of people staying there, and then this can be applied to, um, for example, here is the Chronicle House from Miss Venerable, or um, or the Seren House or historical houses to understand how the plan can be developed in the future. Um, and also on this scale, another thing we are doing is to think about how human and robots, they can coexist. And um, in this project, the students were designing um, an office building in the future uh, where, um, where they, you, you don't have your own desk. It's a hot desk, for example, it's a co-working space. And then you have this conveyor belt to transport your stuff around. So like in the morning, you can come with your yoga mat, with your um, package um, or with other notebooks, and then you can just put them there. And then you can travel from one, one space to another one. Like you can have your hot desk in the morning and then you go to the meeting room in the afternoon, and then you go to the gym um, later after work. So the whole office space is being utilized by the uh, robust um, dynamic system here. But in, 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 in here, what's different is that the conveyor belts are not uh, mechanical, right? They're they are robotic because they can sense a human and then it will stop when there's a human approaching. So based on the, based on the um, observation of how other people are dealing with this problem in a smaller scale, as well as some of the previous um, um, uh, research we did with simulation. I think what we're trying to provoke a little bit more is to make speculation, to think about how we can design um, our city in the future, not just architecture scale, but also urban scale. Um, so to begin with that, I would like to just talk about a little, little bit about the technology we are looking at. Um, as you all know, this is a self-driving um, car. This is the um, image and analyzed from the self-driving car to make the car um, for decision making, right? Where it can recognize the freeway, the exit, the other cars, um, obstacles, etc. And and you also know that with um, with you know the whole development of self driving and also AI, this technology is getting more and more mature. And then as an architect, I think the problem we are thinking is why we are not using this or how we can use this in our design, like in our future. Like this is like Tesla is is something changing the whole car industry, right? Or an iPhone is something changing the whole cell phone industry, 
not just cell phone, but as a, also other media. But how can we learn from this? Or either we can borrow this and to try to apply that to our industry. Um, to do that, we are applying some of the, um, some of the self-driving technology, or in this case is a, is a self-driving robot technology um, with, with, uh, with a real robot. So this is a research we did at UCLA where um, we bought this um, turtle bot, which is a prototypical robot and try to see how we can control the robot or make the robot navigate. So what you see here um, in this, in, in, in the middle is the view from the robot. So this is the space the robot can sense. And then on the right, this is a simulated virtual uh, space. And um, in, the, in the research, we're looking at how to combine the vision of the machine um, and also the path planning to, to the space. So here is, um, this project is developed by several students who are trying to think what, what is the smart furniture, right? For example, how we can make the chair a robot, right? How we can combine robotic technology with a chair. So what they observe is that in the studio, a lot of chairs are not being used. We have a lot of empty chairs. So it wastes money, it takes the space. And if we can apply vision to the chair, then maybe we can start to have a different um, distribution of the chair. So in the morning, the chair is waiting for people and can turn automatically when you want to sit. And then um, when you want to go out, when you want to go somewhere else, um, with the following technology, the chair would recognize you and then try to um, follow you. So as you can see here, when you are in the vision of the chair, they would see from the control line. So what you see here is from the mock-up with the Intel real sense camera, which is also the most popular camera that is being used on some of the um, robots on the market. So the chair would automatic, automatically come to you when you wanna sit down. And then from the vision of the robot, if you are doing a certain behavior, the chair would start to follow you and then also to charge um, itself. So what's really interesting is how you can develop, how you can put the cameras on the chair based on certain geometrical principle, uh, how the chair can, on the other hand, be changed by this, by, by this, um, um, design, how, the, how to kind of make the chair a robot. So we were doing research with both the RGB camera um, and use um, machine vision technology to create, um, to analyze the image in real time. Um, and also to use camera to count uh, people in the studio and then use, um, on the other hand, use the depth camera to create um, a three-dimensional space to better recognize um, the people and also the space. So, the, so the, in the research, different cameras are combined together um, with machine uh, vision technologies to make better and more reliable decisions. So as you can see here, the chair can follow people, um, can recognize the space, not to hit anything, and also can do object detection. So the chair will know, okay, this is the, this is the dinner table, that is a, a refrigerator, and it can also walk in a space and uh, in the meantime recognize the space. And we also start to speculate how the swan behavior can happen when we have multiple chairs, like how if there's a group 
um, intelligence um, that can happen in here. This is also something we are still like investigating um, this year in the in the digital futures workshop. So um, another um, another project we did is to think about how to clean the street, like what kind of algorithm can be applied, not just indoor with a chair, but outdoor to clean, for example, to pick up the garbage. So, um, so the students are looking at two movements. One is a bacteria movement, which is referring back to what I was speaking in the beginning, a small scale um, observation. And the other one is the Roomba movement, which is a parallel pattern that try to cover the whole area. So with the simulation, um, we developed like different pathway and see how much area this can cover, what, what path is the most optimized, and then try to define, um, try to simulate with different numbers of trash. So you can see here with different patterns like linear cluster and scattered patterns. And then the, the, the robot will be able to um, see the trash and try to pick it up. And then we're also testing this out with different obstacle um, arrangements. And then with more trashes, with more even 40, and then you see the path is starting to change completely. And then we're trying to understand what is the most uh, optimized way. So this video is shoot um, in real time in, um, in the parking lot of um, the Ideas Campus in UCLA where you see where there are already a lot of cars. So um, the robot is trying to uh, find the red cones. As you can see, they, they represent the, the trash in this case and try to understand like, how does the algorithm work? How, how, how can we tell the robot to um, turn and then see how much area the robot is covering? And then we distribute trash and also obstacles um, more randomly and then give a certain visual um, radius. So as, so this, uh, this footage is also shot by the drone. So while the robot is trying to uh, detect the trash, we have another drone flying in the air, um, try to shoot this from the plenary view. So for different, uh, we do a lot of tests to see how we can cover as much area as possible. So this goes back to um, how we can, we can think about the future of a larger scale, which is outdoor, which is exceeding architecture, not just you know, indoor in a smaller scale, but also in the urban scale. So, um, um, in, the, in, in Under Volunteer, we also shared a lot of research um, with, uh, with the sidewalk lab. So um, for people who don't know them, they are um, a company under Google, and they are, they are doing a lot of research in uh, urban design and also um, technology that can be applied to, uh, to the street. So they are thinking about how to make um, a better a more convenient street in the future with technologies and being sustainable. So this is something that is happening recently, like, uh, maybe not just recently, but uh, this is happening also at MIT Media Lab uh, with City Science with Ken Larson's group. They are developing um, the proposal, architectural proposal to uh, re-enchant the Champs-Élysées to make the boulevard pedestrian right that's the that's what's happening in paris they are trying to make the street pedestrianized because you also see from covid that that you know when there is a lockdown you don't use the street this is empty and after that can we think about a better future with less cars right and then with less cars how can we apply with the technology that we develop for cars on other things for example on architecture so they are thinking about to develop Shasta say for sports events, for music events, and also for um, education. So in in my lab, which is um, which is um, the Direct Tomorrow Lab in Vienna, 
we are also working with um, with the local authorities um, for this project. We work with the OMATC, which is the traffic department um, in Austria, to develop a, a futuristic or speculative proposal to solve the traffic problem. So as you can see here on this site, um, which is near, which is between the, um, the most central district in Vienna to the second district, uh, we have the bridge here, we have the tram, we also have other cars and how pedestrian can cross, the, cross here and how bicycles can cross here is, has been a big problem. And then what we're developing is to make, um, uh, make a platform with autonomously moving capsules to take people from the street to up in the air and then to transport them to different desired places in the future. So this can be, this can be done um, for both um, pedestrians and also people on the wheelchair and also people on the bicycle. So in this case, um, we are thinking about a traffic solution that will work with uh, the future technology and, and try to apply this autonomous driving um, technology, not just on cars, but smaller things such as a cab, which also provides a safe and comfort experience for pedestrian, right? Like you don't want to share the road with a Tesla, but you would like to share a road with a autonomous um, driving um, small size um, cabin, right? So this provides much, much, much safer experience for people because they are also moving much, much slower than cars. So we're trying to think about how we can create a cohesive space and um, better future for the city. So in the studio, um, we are also invited by um, the Maxi Museum in Rome to make a proposal for the, an exhibition uh, about technology, which is gonna open um, in September this year. So what we propose is to turn Vienna's um, Ringstrasse, which is a circular street, into um, a pedestrianized street that can be occupied by people, right? But we are not just we are not just simply say, okay, here is the street, please go and occupy this. We are trying to develop architectural proposal and design so um, so the people and citizens can enjoy the urban space uh, for different. Um, programs like in this case what you see is the the restaurants can be installed with um, crane um, robot um, and from summer to winter they can change its configuration and then you see how pedestrians cars and robots are um, co-living together on the street um, we are also working on things with more technical or more mechanic or with more mechanisms um, to think about how we can develop a prototypical product that can be applied in the urban space. So here what you see is a, is a prototypical project by Tobias from our studio in Vienna. And what he's developing is a hydraulic system that can be transported by, um, by AGV, autonomously guided um, vehicle. So you can you can you can move um, you can move this piece to the street autonomously, and then with a the hydraulic system, this can create architectural space for different purposes. So as you can see, um, the whole system is foldable, um, sustainable, and also doesn't leave any trace. And then to work with the technology together, um, they are they develop this proposal for. Uh, for Vienna to think about how to also utilize the tram line um, with robots together. So in here, they are creating the retail space for local food and local shops in order to activate the business as well as um, the outdoor activities for the, for the citizens. So I think that's... Um, the last um, project I want to share. 
that's the last project I want to share. I think the main um, the main focus of this lecture is to try to think about this problem in a very different way into different scales, right? With with observation, with simulation, and then with um, speculative um, proposal. So I think um, let's welcome Giovanna Pasilla for her lecture, please. Yes. Um, Okay. Could you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, well, yes, um, my name is Giovanna Piaca. Um, thanks for the invitation for Young Scholar Symposium AI and Human Machine Direction. And um, my topic is memory and perception between human intelligence and artificial intelligence. I'm a VR architect uh, in Ricardo Palma University. I'm co-founder of Ola Research Lab or Online Lab of Architecture. I'm assistant professor in uh, UCAL, Universidad de Ciencias y Artes de America Latina and regional manager in Digital Futures. Um, in the last two years, I have done several projects where I use different uh, computational tools, depending on myself uh, limitations to making projects uh, build on a scale one by one uh, during pandemic times. And uh, that uh, made me uh, search or choose another options. Uh, my basic tools that I started using was computational design, virtual or immersive environments, and artificial intelligence uh, to improve the imagination of what I can do. And my inspiration uh, to make uh, my projects is a uh, biology like natural systems and the personal and collective memories and uh, the ancestral rituals in Peru specific and uh, the death like, like the re ritual where you uh, pass the away and you finish a period of life. Um, I start asking me about the limits of digital space and physical space. Um, and also, which is the cultural value that the AI could uh, inherit from the creativity and generational uh, legacy. Uh, to start asking, uh, um, then I uh, try to, to choose answers and I filter my, my, my ideas into the art, architecture, my, our mind and the machine. Um, I think that our mind I have the power of create or generate uh, new ideas throughout the exploration of multiple situations. Um, it could be because um, one can feel uh, maybe non-conformity, curiosity, uh, something like persistence or resistance and willingness to take a risk. And I, think that that why my projects is based in a speculative design too. The first project that I want to, to share is a digital retailer or 
uh, in English, something like the digital art altar piece. Um, uh, this project uh, is about the restoration of mortuary rituals with deep learning. Um, uh, this project start with a first research where I uh, seek to, to explore the recreation of a traditional ritual in Ayacucho, Peru in a contemporary medium while using data from social media to uncover a collective perspective. It is a hybrid approach of data extraction and transformation through deep learning algorithms and interjection of subjective curation for, for contextual uh, interpretation and reorganization. Uh, the, modern uh, digi digitalized world uh, has great potential for uncovering puzzles of the past and preserving our culture for the future. Um, and yeah, uh, this uh, process uh, was a uh, the uh, part of the final exhibition that in my idea, I want to select the memories, my personal memories in the first time, and then uh, translate into the, uh, in, into a 3D model uh, that is a very conceptual model, which have the, the material uh, because have reasons about the, the cultural and the ancestral uh, people in in my family. I try to use gold and flowers and points that there are the translation of connection that we have in the life. But when we uh, that uh, we continue uh, maintain because this uh, this this uh, net is or this network is create. Uh, was created in our life, but uh, it's like a, a, a metal that is that you can uh, uh, you, you can throw that is something that is uh, is now in our present. But uh, I try to to move this project into the uh, AR uh, uh, space. And uh, what's interesting for me uh, make this uh, example uh, because I use my my smartphone to project into the uh, open space in the public space. But uh, was curious when another uh, people that was uh, traveling around uh, start to interact with me uh, just for their curiosity to uh, know what I was doing or why I was uh, performing uh, in this space. And then of that, I uh, start my interest in not work only uh, about my own memories. And I try to start uh, conforming new research with collective memories. And uh, that's how um, I start the idea of the retablo ayacuchano. Uh, the retablo is like a, a like a figurative uh, element in the Andes of Peru, uh, where the artisans or the artists can uh, recreate in physical models. Uh, different situations about the past, the present, or maybe they can imagine the future. And uh, they try to, to, to make uh, situations in 3D forms about contextual, politic, economic, social, or maybe about to uh, relate uh, a special uh, memory for a family. Uh, the 
retablo, the altarpiece, uh, there are have different uh, forms, there have uh, different size. And I try to reimagine this uh, piece, but uh, not in the physical uh, reality, on the tangible reality. I uh, want to, to walk in the virtual world um, into this uh, element, into this, uh, for me, into this architecture. And uh, I... I start to do a new research. Um, I try to understand the, the memory of this context that was uh, Ayacucho. First, uh, this is a, 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 a short portrait of people who live in uh, 60s um, in Ayacucho. Uh, previous the internal war that happened in, in, in Ayacucho. And it uh, was uh, very interesting to uh, observe that the people, the uh, environment, uh, the physical environment uh, could uh, uh, or, or change a lot only because it uh, happened a, a war into this uh, space. And uh, to uh, then uh, understand the, the, the portraits of the people, I understand that uh, the faces is not really the most important. I understand that the uh, memory that the people can uh, have like an storage in the in a virtual space like the social networks is uh, now more important for me, and I think that is like a, a new type of um, of knowledge that that are open to to the public because a lot of people don't uh, have uh, any of um, privacy uh, in, in his graphics that uh, share to the world. And I just start um, uh, downloading a lot of graphics with the different hashtags uh, from social media. I download hashtags uh, from Ayacucho, from portraits, for landscapes Ayacucho, and my data sets um, transform uh, in a in new, in new image and uh, to recreate uh, a new uh, imaginary uh, graphics or to create a new imaginary architecture, I try to play with different codes in artificial intelligence. I try to use inputs like image plus image. And uh, before uh, 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 that I uh, use a cycle gun or a style gun to recreate new graphics, I use um, the machine learnings to make new outputs. And I uh, also try to use uh, audios and text to start um, recreating new ideas about the, this type of uh, alter piece and uh, to uh, start thinking in how will uh, be the, the life in the future of this, um, this space that is Ayacucho. And, um, my, my my process uh, in general starts with uh, with my source that is my personal data like maybe a designer input uh, that is uh, in increase with my experience um, I thought that my experience is uh, life because I be part of the ritual of the dead the audio because all of us are involved in the in the in the sun in the sun environment and also into the traditional music that uh, happen in this specific space 
And also we are very visual. In this part, I uh, extract the data collecting from social media for the, a lot of people who, who, who share a public his image. And I um, download around 9,000 of image with these different um, inputs. And um, in the process, uh, it, it, like the, the principal process that I use is uh, with the ritual, I dissect the elements and uh, try to reconceptualize these elements to make a, a new idea related with the sound. I uh, try to uh, uh, have the, the principal songs that the principal uh, elements, the principal uh, instrumental to, to make songs in the, that remember the people, these uh, rituals. And then uh, with the data collective, extract the, the common features with deep learning and, uh, into algorithmic process. Then uh, we throw a transformation process that is the part that translate all of our uh, data extract and uh, convert this data into a virtual environment in a, a virtual experience or um, AR experience uh, uh, with the propose to uh, the people can interact with uh, the idea of Ayacucho, the idea of the context, but understanding that uh, the new creation is something different that they can watch in the past. And this is an example, uh, a short example of images that uh, are fixed about the uh, graphics that I extract of the data set. And um, the different hashtags that I, I use um, help to, to the algorithms to recreate the image. For example, uh, some uh, windows, uh, some internal windows, uh, change the color, change the contracts, the contrast uh, of the form. And uh, this new fake image helped me to recreate a new idea of uh, could, how could be uh, an altarpiece or like an architecture sp uh, space uh, into an experience in the virtual world. And um, then of that, I try to uh, aggregate by patterns of these uh, elements, this type of images. And I uh, recognize uh, uh, some lines that, uh, could, could, that I could recreate uh, in with uh, basic uh, uh, 3D, uh, extrusions or rotations, uh, I, I could recreate it to 3D and then build a new architecture. Uh, this is a short example for, uh, about uh, the images that uh, was uh, rethinking by the computer and that I tried to, to rescue to, 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 to have a, a, a new perspective uh, about the, the memory that exists in, in, in Ayacucho. And then of that, uh, this is the uh, architecture that was recreated. Um, this is a, a piece that well, is possible uh, visit it in AR. Um, uh, here we can. Um, oh, I I try to 
uh, reduce the the points of the size of, of this um, uh, architecture, virtual architecture. And I understand that uh, there are difference uh, between the physical and the virtual space. I, I told that uh, in the future, um, we can use different uh, tools, but, uh, but, but it's not the same. Uh, 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 um almost i we can do songs or or textures of new mat or new materials the experience is always uh, different into the experience uh, you can uh, start um, working around the like the air world that is the kaipacha in quechua uh that is like the the world of lights um then you can decide if you go to the above earth, the celestial world, the, or you can uh, go to the underworld, that is the world of the dead. And in these different parts, um, in the next process, uh, I use the, the, the texture of the data uh, of the algorithms to recreate new materials and um, start uh, trying like uh, remembrance of the real space, but um, throw a, a new uh, perception of the space. Um, uh, and in conclusion, I use the data collected. I use different type of algorithms to start new image. And this new image uh, started from a different process of cyclones uh, was recreating into an architectural model. Uh, and I could recognize that the different, that, that the Artificial intelligence try to to choose patterns into the graphics, but something, uh, so sometimes these patterns, um, I, not not match exactly with the reality, and uh, in this uh, space when the machines don't match uh, exactly with the reality, uh, is where there are like a a a, a whole space where is open for the creativity to recreate and make new things with this data or this image. Um, then this experience was translated to the virtual space and uh, the people ca can have the access of this uh, space could uh, walk into and I move my idea of uh, of uh, half a, an altarpiece um, uh, to walk in the reality. I move this idea to the to the virtual reality, and I recreate an, a virtual environment with this altarpiece. Uh, but um, that what was all. I continue thinking in the temples of this uh, space for, for rituals. And uh, I use another uh, code to uh, force the, the machine to recreate the spaces that uh, was created with, <laughs> with, with the, another graphics too, but um, testing that if they can recognize uh, the the contrast or the different colors of materials that were existing to the reality or the this new uh, creation into the in, with the computer. Um, uh, this is one of the the the, the last tests that I make. Um, uh, was testing not uh, not my my complete idea was testing about the other architects that 
uh, we talk in temples, and this is like a futuristic temple in India, created with uh, Mayan son, uh, more process architect, and wolf bricks. And this is a result of this prom. Um, and was very interesting because I uh, can ser uh, search in, in this new video uh, similar characteristics uh, about the spiritual or the mental or the um, important space for half a, to, to, to have a ritual in, for, for own or for a collective uh, idea for a collective celebrity. Um, uh, after that, uh, I ask if it's possible visualize the data uh, extract for social media into the virtual um, uh, building. And uh, I, I can share my second project that I work with my uh, team of online lab of architecture. Uh, this next project name is the power of data. Uh, in Ola, we began to question whether there was a possibility of using real data to build a space that are designing for this growing virtuality. Uh, to achieve this goal, we use artificial intelligence algorithms um, uh, and try to, to recreate this data from social networks, especially from the Instagram uh, social network. And uh, because it's the, the, the pioneer that uh, all of us use. And then we move the, the creation into the Sansar, which is a, an online platform for a virtual reality. And this project also was a curatorial project whose experimental research process aims to expand technology knowledge and make visibility of the impact of data generated in social networks in contemporary society. Throughout the creation of virtual and immersive experience designed by architects in collaboration uh, with artificial intelligence process. Uh, to make this process, we understand that uh, we, like uh, humans, have sensations, have songs, uh, we can navigate, we can have uh, interactions in the reality, but also we need that into the virtual reality. And in the virtual reality, we can uh, make, uh, we can use another uh, experience like play with the gravity, play with interactive objects, play with the, with the immersity and play with the new creation of materiality. And all of that is, uh, is the, the, what, what had uh, the power of data. Uh, the power of data uh, born like an also auto sustainable project into the idea is an speculative design uh, which is placed into the uh, the Antarctic in in a zone that is not uh, reclaimed for any other country and in this research uh, of the social media of network, uh, we understand that uh, not all of the people in the world have access to the internet. And we was uh, also uh, surprised when we understand that uh, just in, in Latin America, only the 70, 60, 70 percent of people have access to the internet. And uh, uh, that I, I think that this is a, a short uh, group of people. And uh, also we discovered that the 
most important um, social uh, in 2020 that was when I start the pandemic times uh, was Facebook uh, around the world. Um, then uh, in the research, we uh, choose different uh, problems around the data about around the social networks that happen uh, in the in the world. For example, uh, we can uh, see now twelve experience of problems uh, that happen in between two thousand nine from two thousand sixteen. Uh, the data and its ability. Uh, has the ability to unite the message silence, one of the most powerful people in the world, uh, as was the case of former US President Donald Trump, uh, who was eliminated from, the, from, from his social virtual environment, and he lost the complete uh, communication with his supporters and his power influence in the real world through virtuality. Uh, which was uh, limited. And uh, at this point, we thought that the roles are changing and the new paradigm is whether social networks today have more value than real items like the gold, for example. And also we start uh, understanding that uh, we have now, uh, like the, in the tangible uh, space, and uh, in the virtual space, we have now a past, we have a present, and we have also a, probably a, a future into uh, in, in interactive with uh, the machines. And um, uh, it's curious that because uh, we are uh, having uh, like a digital footprint and this digital footprint uh, requires servers that occupy a real storage and need a conservation space in different cool spots on the planet. Uh, Begin this data band, the information that uh, tell our story for the future. Um, during the creative process, uh, we got, uh, we was cultivate uh, the, the interest of the group uh, in the con constant tendency of technology to try the resemblance of nature too. And for human being, the center of all processing is uh, our brain. And in the search for data representation uh, in the process of form finding, um, uh, we try to to, to make a similarity with the, with the human brain. Um, the creating for the formal design uh, of an artificial brain like a, like the center part of the of the of this project. Uh, the data structure of this uh, project uh, was uh, we, we had a, a, a big data set of graphics and uh, numbers um, the, about times, about years, about number of uh, image that the people search in, in a year. And uh, we try to understand how the influencers people uh, uh, is uh, the behavior of influencer people. And we create, recreate uh, some sculptures with the data, uh, throwing the time, throwing the number of likes that these people uh, have in his social media. And finally, uh, the two types of data clouds were created. The first, the first correspond to uh, work clouds and emojis. Uh, these work clothes are the result of the analysis of the comments made in different publications of the these selected profiles. And this type of visualization has been done on one hand 
for the most used words regardless of the language, but also filtering the results for the words in, in Spanish, in English, and for the most used uh, emojis. Uh, this type of analysis give us the global vision of the relationship that is generating between the users and the content that, the content, uh, that they consume. And uh, in this moment, we start, uh, we have clear that we like a human uh, live in that tangible reality, but also we have something like a new human into the virtual reality that is more related with technology. And this is an example of the different data sets that we throw. We use a uh, we we try to 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 add information to add graphics uh, of architectural cuts and also to uh, graphics of uh, recreation of our brains recreation of our uh, neural connections and uh, that that's like a a, a short uh, image, uh, uh, like a version of the big data set that we had in a moment. And the, the first phase, like in my first project, uh, was uh, recreating uh, more than more than once, we're creating uh, more than one time. And we try to choose in these different uh, new information, these new hallucinations, uh, try to, to recreate a new architecture to convert into the uh, new virtual experience, uh, uh, trying to visualize or visibilize to, uh, and to others the importance or how much data we can extract about your information, uh, your public information into the social networks. And then of that, we start uh, asking to an, in, into another uh, code, uh, we start asking about the future of the social networks or maybe to, to ask about the prediction for the artificial intelligence for the future of the, our society. And it uh, was very interesting to uh, choose uh, data or graphics that <laughs> is very similar, for example, that the uh, another example of projects that you are choosing today uh, in your projects. But for us, uh, all of the, this image was the, like the, the data, the numbers or graphics to recreate a new architecture. To recreate a new architecture, we could be uh, auto-sustainable, we could be auto-created, and uh, we could be like an oasis into the world, to the people. And we try to, to use this image uh, for, for a start for us, uh, with the process of artificial intelligence, uh, have, uh, some, have, have some results. Then this new image of, this new image hallucination was uh, again selecting uh, and then to start with the process of form finding throughout the different uh, computational tools. Uh, we use algorithms uh, of um, natural ground to uh, recreate forms that uh, could uh, uh, be 3D printing in, in the future. And we start the different points. Uh, like a, a footprint uh, in the 3D space, in the virtual 3D space, and then we create the final form. 
And uh, this is a, a, a shared example of one of the process that we had with the creation. And uh, it's important uh, to, to share the, a lot of points that we uh, have in, 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 into the process. And uh, this is like the test of how uh, we'll be creating into uh, with the algorithm, with the biological algorithm, uh, translating the numbers that we had into a 3D model, into the 3D architecture. And um, uh, the, the building was uh, created by data and coding process in different three-dimensional design and modeling program. The building has the following characteristics of a structural grid, data vectors that run completely through it, thermal insulation, and a 3D printed graphene structure. Uh, additional, the, the Analogy of the storage processing is a prediction of data over time with the past, present, and future has been proposed in the project uh, in such a way that the architectural organization follows the same logic. And it is a, the, how was the building organized in three temporal phases? Um, we recreate uh, three different uh, uh, zones, no? L like the past zones, the, like the present zones and the future zone. And our idea, in our idea, in this uh, past zone uh, was all of the data was uh, the, the space for, for research of the people who visited the project and could, uh, be uh, in this area, uh, interact our our own brain like, like human, and start like a process uh, while you are uh, drawing, working around the project. Um, the the brain of this building could understand or predict your future uh, behaviors. And uh, the idea is that the people who visited the project in the future zone could uh, understand or talk with, the, with, with her own uh, or her virtual uh, uh, projection and ask them if the people want uh, about the future or about the present or only uh, try to remember uh, some things of the past that the, the, these people in this moment can remember very well. Um, the building consists of five uh, data sculptures who, which was uh, distributed into the, all the, the present zone of the project. And uh, they can use uh, in the virtual experience different platforms, ramps, elevators, and they could visit the uh, laboratory area and view the, the area and the future area and watch the different uh, sculptures. And uh, this is a, 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 like the, the, the visual of the research area where there are into in the center part the sculpture, one of the sculpture of data that we work, uh, which is visible from the lobby of this architecture. Uh, uh, we are trying to resemble the our brains and how we can have uh, a big um, connection, so big uh, space the, of storage in, in our brains but it's uh, translated for uh, a virtual space. And we have also a social area and uh, uh, an area where we use the different point of data and we name 
uh, the cloud of data, the, the is like the visual to 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 see uh, the landscape uh, around the the space, the architectural space. Uh, here, uh, th this is like the space where uh, we can connect uh, with our our uh, our own our 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 ideas that was predicting for the architectural uh, sorry for the artificial intelligence and uh, you can uh, ask or or search information that uh, you can remember in, in this person. But also we had a social space where is visible all of your connections in the in your social networks. And we thought that uh, if we will be more open into the virtual uh, space, we could make um, real connections like into the real world. And uh, that's why it's important be be clear like, like humans in the reality and be ourselves into the virtual world to continue making real connections uh, in the in the in the world. And finally, this is like the, the virtual experience that we had with the power of data. This is the first space. Then you can visit the sculptures or you can throw around a space for uh, data of artificial intelligence, throw the different problems that are happening in the pandemic uh, times pre-pandemic times uh, related with social media. And uh, finally, you can visit the, 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 one of the most important space is the flow of data. And uh, then you can go to the future space, the future zone to talk with yourself. And, uh, this project was translated also into the 360 experience. And uh, if you uh, can open the, the program of the virtual um, have access to a virtual reality, uh, which of the it's important interact also not only with the virtual reality or not uh, use only the, the tools like artificial intelligence to recreate the presence or make a, a complete or, or, or have the, all the solution for the, the person. But we can uh, speculate about the ideally future. We can speculate with, uh, and use the tools to, to recreate a new architecture and make new experience for the people. and. Uh, and help us uh, in talk about our past, our present, and our future related with the data and uh, with these different algorithms of artificial intelligence that we are using uh, in, in, in our present. Uh, That's all my presentation. Thank you for that space. If you have another uh, question, so if you want to contact me, you can follow me in Instagram. Yeah, this is my, my, my name in the different Instagrams. And my webpage is jovanapichaka.com and you can search me too in this space. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Giovanna, uh, for sharing the project and also the innovative um, um, approach to design. So maybe we can have a kind of maybe like let's say reflection or discussion on some of the some of the um, the the things we discussed in our 
you know, three different um, different lectures. Uh, maybe if I can get this topic started, I noticed uh, in both um, Likai and uh, Giovanna, you both, you know, were tackling with, um, with again, with a machine learning generated um, image. Uh, my question would be like, how, how do we think about this image? Because, because how far is this image um, from the image to, to design, right? Like in your video, you were showing this transformation with, uh, with Zaha, with um, MAD, you know, with, with Prix um, hashtag, right? And then how do you think this is, um, like speculatively speaking, like how far you think this, this is um, from our design? Uh, okay. Uh, when when I, I start working with uh, uh, some algorithms or searching in artificial intelligence, some answers answers for a creation, I uh, really uh, don't understand how we can uh, uh, search in a machine. Uh, an hallucination or maybe an input to recreate something new. Uh, in reality, that's why I start using or I start playing with artificial intelligence. And, uh, and the first time I was very uh, hard <laughs> to create that uh, this process could help us. Uh, but I try to, to watch not only uh, the, the reaction, the first reaction, I try to, to use the, the new input, the new data to, to use my, my mind, use my, uh, my imagination, use my creativity to recreate a new space. Because I told that uh, like architect, uh, we also are uh, thinking in between 2D, but throw into to 3D. And that's why I, I can see in, in this process, in these graphics, in these images, in, the, in these new facts. And I think that it's very interesting that we continue playing with this imaginary and having like a new data and making a storage of this data but the most important is try to understand the different patterns that we can search into this image, into this new image. And uh, I, I think that the, the artificial intelligence could help us to, to understand how our brain uh, is working now, but not exactly to understand the the, the system is more like understand how, uh, what are we uh, sharing to the world? How we are uh, uh, creating new data and uh, uh, making like an storage to, to new creation for the machine. Um, I, I think that uh, there's the, I, I, for me, I leave the future that I will continue working with the artificial intelligence. My, my question is because what we, you know, usually in the design process, um, let's say you start with, um, with a program, right? With verbal or with thoughts or with diagram, right? With diagram and then you develop into geometries, let's say, right? With, um, with a floor, with a with a wall, with a window into geometries, and then you develop those definition into materiality, right? And then you would visualize this with a rendering software with in a perspective view, or if you build this, build the design out, and then you would photograph this with a picture. And these are the source for the machine learning algorithm, right? These are the the, the, the database, right? So the algorithm is kind of operating purely on 2D, like it doesn't go back to the 3D, right? It is just manipulating 
um, the pixels, right? It analyzes an image. It has no idea about architecture. It has no idea about the discipline. It just moves the pixel from one place to another one, change the value, uh, rearrange them, uh, with, apply with other um, motion graphic algorithms, and we see something else, right? And this can be understood, you know, as um, as a reference. But how, you know, what do you think about the potential if we can apply with something three dimensional, or we can apply to something more specific to things happening in our discipline? Because if I'm, um, uh, for example, if I'm a de dessert maker, right? right if I I, I design desserts. I could easily just input some data like uh, chocolate mousse with uh, ice cream, and then the computer would give me something new. And then I would say, okay, I can create a new dessert out of that. Um, but then you see, okay, for architects, in this, for this process, the, the way we apply with machine learning, we have no difference from a dessert maker. So where do our expertise come in? Where, how can we incorporate with our disciplinary knowledge into this process? I think that's, um, that's something we should um, discuss because I think right now it seems we have this super powerful um, machine, this super powerful system. And then I think we need to think about how to optimize this in, with our own disciplinary knowledge. I think in your work, what we saw is something super spectacular, like how um, we are able to create a space with, let's say, um, something we cannot even imagine with our, or we cannot foresee, right? We can, we can create this speculative image or speculative space without um, seeing that. Because I think in, um, in Nikai's lecture, you also showed this urban planning, um, urban planning in, um, um, proposal style transfer. style transfer, right? From Matthias Del Carpo. How do you interpret this in different scales? Because that is something in the urban design scale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I was informed to do, uh, to do the test because there are some more cases in Shenzhen, an accident, mm -hmm. so I can't open it. Uh, I I agree with you what is said just now about the about uh, how far the uh, image generation will go or even uh, the modern generation according to the uh, machine learning and so on. Um, we are different from an artist. Um, an architecture is different from an art. So uh, from my side, I I don't agree with that that kind of. Uh, application and uh, education uh, in my studio, uh, to be honest. And, um, uh, but on the other side, uh, from the virtual point of view, uh, in VR and AR application, I think that would be a good, uh, good, good, good direction for applying the data merging or machine learning generating technology. Um, but mm -hmm. in real in reality, we have so many constraints, not only on, not only on Earth, but also on, on the Moon uh, or in, in Mars. Uh, we should generate, uh, we, we should create space or container for human, for machines and for um, equipment. So there must be many constraints. And what, what we should do, our job is to um, synthesize is to consider all the aspects mm, at the same time and give a, a suitable solution. I think that, that that is the job, that is the task for an architect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a great point of view because it seems um, for things that is more, you know, virtual, right? I, I, because the result, what it's creating is, um, is, is an image or in some more powerful algorithm, you create like a three-dimensional model. For these virtual um, elements, this can be applied to, uh, let's say the metaverse, right? What, what um, Facebook is trying to pioneer with like the virtual elements in the game industry or 
in the metaverse. I think that's something super interesting for also for us to think about how we're going to deal with um, the physical construction compared with the virtual information. Uh, because I think historically something very, very interesting was, um, was um, how architecture is reacting to the society, right? Something, Giovanna, you have been dealing with, like in the um, in, in, um, in, um, um, expo, in the Osaka expo, right? I think it's 1958, where architecture has once reached to its peak, right? With the all archigram idea and how it's gonna deal with, with um, the future and information. In the Osaka Expo, there are so many fascinating ideas came on board along with the, with the metabolism. And, um, but, but, but after that, right after that, what happened is the information technology took over, right? With the information technology, um, as you saw, like with the, with, with the, with the um, internet, with a cell phone, with a laptop, um, it quickly took over and the architecture has been, you know, went to another, another era, which was um, the postmodernism, right? It didn't catch up with this, with this um, flow. And now we are seeing um, something like, uh, now I think we are looking at the second wave where we can start to play with um, the societal information and data, right? I think in Giovanna, your work, you were, um, this one is also very impressive that you were dealing with hashtags um, that the information were collected from from either the internet or other resources. Maybe like I, I'm wondering how you think about the relationship between um, the um, design of architecture or the idea of architecture to the information that is surrounded in the whole globe. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, in the power of data was uh, important visibilize the, the information because we understand that in this uh, area, <laughs> there are a, a, a big difference uh, in, into the society. Not only for poor people, it's more like the social difference. And not all have access to the internet. And uh, in the, into, into this uh, idea, we try to communicate and educate new, not exactly to architects, uh, more uh, was a project more open uh, for maybe uh, young people. Uh, who try to understand this type of algorithms or to try to, to, to learn about computational design and try to, to start uh, moving uh, this type of tools uh, in this area. And uh, in, the, in, your, in your first uh, question, um, for me, the the was very interesting uh, discover that uh, some graphics uh, had uh, could capture the materiality could capture some forms and could capture the like the uh, idea or the spirit of the ayacucho that was the context uh, but i think um, that uh, my own, the, my own experience, my personal experience in contact with this ritual, in contact with this space, in contact with the uh, real architecture in the past, uh, was the like the catalysis, the ca catalysis to 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 make this uh, virtual environment, this virtual architecture, uh, in in a real connection with. Uh, with a real context. Um, I think that, uh, or I, I talk, uh, I continue thinking that uh, our brain or our mind is uh, very powerful and they can create a, and connect a patterns that uh, the machine, like you said, uh, 
the machine didn't know what uh, are connecting because there are only pixels and there are only points into the, or it's only number is into the machines. But we have the power to connect and recreate uh, uh, with innovation or with creativity and uh, use these uh, tools to uh, help, not exactly help others, but uh, try to communicate others that there are, there are tools uh, in this present that they can use and uh, you can use the data into the art, into the uh, beautiful graphic or into the real world like a machine uh, or like a solution for uh, people that can uh, walk uh, or, or maybe the people that have uh, psychological problems and, and the data uh, call a start we call uh, start speculating that the data uh, could make like the the, the new um, person, the new people person, the new person that uh, in the virtuality can uh, help to reconnect with us or reconnect with our sensibility. And uh, I think that that's the way why I understanding the collective data and why it's important to use the big collective data that are public to recreate uh, with experience and not only with solutions in this moment, uh, maybe in the future, but uh, start with a, a speculative experience to, to move others to try to use these uh, tools in my country specifically, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, I think. It's creating another sovereignty, right? Which is very different from what you know the the current um, society or state of mind has been established. It is it is also functioning as a way to share the collective experience and also um, the knowledge. So, and I because I, I know you are also um, um, oh, here. We have also Professor Philip. Uh, Feel free to jump into the discussion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. I partly uh, uh, listen uh, of your uh, the lecture. I think um, it's it's interesting to jump in and out a little bit uh, to see what's happening uh, in your research. It's quite um, open uh, platform, especially for the young uh, scholars. Uh, I think uh, uh, we make a lot of discussion and last year with uh, New Leach about what is uh, material intelligence and immaterial intelligence. Especially uh, we make debate on this kind of uh, um, uh, creativity or imagination. Uh, so the value for that uh, in both virtual space and, uh, and, uh, and the physical space. I think we can see all the potential um, possibilities for that. Uh, right now, uh, I think uh, we want to address all these kind of uh, frontier cutting cutting edge research in uh, in the age of post humanism. So I think most important, like uh, we invite um, um, uh, Bernard uh, Stiegel uh, coming to make lecture, who is a, a French philosopher. Uh, two years ago, be before uh, he suicide, uh, uh, two two weeks before his suicide. 2020, he made an important lecture talking about the entropy reduction for the uh, the, the intelligence uh, uh, which can contribute to the future of uh, post-humanism. I think uh, the new uh, grammarization, grammarization is a kind of a new grammar, how we reorganize the planet. I think uh, which is important to give the value uh, if our research is valuable, is uh, if we need to make certain research for the discipline. I think uh, the contribution for the intelligence to architecture discipline is if we can reduce the entropy uh, to the planet. I think uh, maybe this kind of um, uh, uh, creative process can um, uh, um, increase the, the emerging um, uh, immerse into certain kind of um, uh, industry or which can uh, increase the, the creati creativity and uh, saving at the uh, same time saving energy and uh, making 
uh, the physical and virtual space more environment friendly uh, to the planet. I think that's a valuable thing to rethinking all the knowledge, uh, uh, address all this kind of knowledge on the, uh, the Earth, the planet. That's why this year, I think uh, the topic for the futures is one planet. I think it's a more global view to rethinking on what we're doing. So uh, on the one hand, uh, I think uh, the virtual reality is extremely important because that's a certain kind of um, collective thinking or data-driven uh, uh, creative process which can really uh, uh, embrace or introduce this kind of uh, machine intelligence into the human uh, creativity. I think it's a kind of, it's kind of a collective, a collective uh, uh, creative process. To, um, to, 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 to set up or to establish some, some uh, new scenarios, uh, which also we define as spatial experience, uh, maybe in the game, maybe in the metaverse, uh, and, but it still produce certain kind of uh, creativity or we need uh, the metaverse architect design certain kind of space and we need some uh, a special spatial experience or digital human uh, who can interactively make communication uh, and also uh, they can they can actually spatially uh, virtual spatially uh, make connection uh, to each other. So I think maybe that is part of the uh, the the virtual uh, uh, habitation on the planet. Uh, and the architect in the future, from my imagination, we should not only design the physical space, but also we should uh, engage our contribution to the metaverse space. So I think uh, uh, what's the uh, Giovanna's research is the valuable for her research is actually he can introduce this kind of local um, information uh, with the uh, the metaverse uh, spatial 2D to 3D uh, uh, modeling, and uh, it's kind of dynamic interactive uh, process is, is valuable, I think, uh, which could be um, uh, uh, give us some potential possibility to rethinking how to make use of a big data surrounding us, especially some local data. So, and uh, at the same time, I think uh, uh, as Hi, uh, 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 Kaiho's research, which is very similar to my team, uh, actually, we're also rethinking on the uh, perception of space and uh, 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 autonomous uh, 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 spatial experience. So the agency, uh, not only including the human being, but also the future uh, machine is kind of new intelligence who, who becomes agency uh, on the planet. So the future from different skill, as I mentioned, um, uh, from agorism to the, the macro skill in the city, all these kind of smart agency, including the human and non-human, they should inter interactively uh, uh, set up some initial logic. Maybe that's a new pattern, two dimension to multi-dimensional pattern, we should make research and uh, we should engage into this kind of uh, uh, new social uh, relationships, uh, but the social including human and non-human. So it's really valuable. Uh, we can see some advantage uh, uh, from your research and to redefining any vehicle or mobile, or, uh, including the chair could be one of the uh, smart agency to uh, interactively influence the daily life and the future uh, behavior, uh, social behavior. Uh, so I can see the, the, this valuable, uh, it's maybe right now it's kind of utopian research, new uh, digital utopian research, because uh, the agency, uh, intelligence of agency could not um, uh, so smart right now, but I think uh, the, the, the iteration is so fast. Who can say five years later, uh, the autonomous vehicles, including the chairs, autonomous chairs, uh, which can, can really uh, 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 deploy and uh, engage into our daily life. I think we can see the valuable things because we have a lot of uh, like uh, in-situ robotics right now. Uh, I think uh, we, we try to uh, set up the communication between the robotics and between the robot and human. 
I think that's although it's a very early stage, but uh, uh, year by year, I think uh, the technology and um, optimization or iteration is so fast. So I think it's a really good, I can see the potential uh, value, value or the advantage of your research, uh, which is extremely meaningful, extremely meaningful. Uh, so year by year, uh, uh, you're welcome uh, to Digital Future platform and the workshops. Uh, I want to see the uh, iteration of your research. Uh, uh, just like uh, Skylar from uh, MIT, I think uh, this self-assembly uh, algorithm, he, uh, he, he, he established or, um, uh, uh, year, uh, I think it's around five five years, more than five years ago. But in these five years, autonomous um, um, uh, agency, uh, uh, autonomous intelligence, actually in the robotic industry, not in architecture industry, in the robotic uh, discipline industry, people make a lot of research on this kind of um, uh, 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 passing through a, a, a bridge. Your, your name is uh, the, the neck, uh, uh, it's chicken neck. Um, uh, algorithm, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, that's that's extremely interesting to find this kind of smart um, uh, algorithms. How to um, how to autonomously uh, control the vehicles and the robotics in the future? So that's quite interesting to me, uh, and uh, it's, uh, we can see the the, the valuable uh, advantage uh, for your research. Uh, Lee Kai's uh, research is more theoretical. It's more like a holistic uh, vision on the intelligence um, of the uh, 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 architecture discipline. Uh, I think uh, probably my suggestion to this kind of um, uh, theoretical thinking is uh, should be uh, based on uh, a more uh, global or holistic scenario to see our discipline. The architect discipline right now should be redefined, rethinking from an even bigger uh, uh, perspective. I think the design and, uh, itself is not just on the physical um, or ge ge geometric, geometrical uh, 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 space or the material, material, uh, material space. I think material um, scenarios. Uh, which goes to the integration of material and immaterial. Uh, as to the uh, the uh, the the multi-dimensional reduction you mentioned, and uh, I think it's quite interesting because the artificial intelligence is kind of a black box, which can uh, also reduce a lot of uh, process, maybe based on the human experience and uh, including the images, including patterns, including the algorithms, uh, which the knowledge, the mapping of the knowledge actually is from the tradition, is from the dis a tradition in the discipline. Also, I think artificial intelligence have uh, a lot of potential uh, uh, skills to replace this kind of process. So, but the most important for the young scholar, I think uh, it's better to focus on some cutting edge, uh, 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 very, uh, specific scenarios would be helpful to go even deeper. Uh, probably it's a tools, probably it's a, uh, uh, it's a algorithm will be more, more helpful to go even deeper uh, uh, on part of the, the scenario because the, the global transformation is so rapid and uh, uh, the, the cross discipline is happen so broad uh, so I think we need this kind of communication and, uh, and the open uh, uh, platform to see what's happening on the planet, on the Earth. So thanks uh, for, for your presentation. I think it's a great session uh, from three, three of you. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. I think that that is a great closure for today's symposium. Maybe before we um, we um, finish the symposium, let's invite Li Kai and Giovanna if you guys want to make some final speech. Um, okay. Um, uh, I really appreciate uh, just now Professor Yuan's uh, suggestion about the uh, architectural design, not only uh, for in physical world, but also in the uh, virtual, uh, virtual world. Yes, yes. Um, 
uh, this 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 system is also uh, suitable for uh, virtual virtual reality. And uh, I think the most important thing I'm concerning about is the human cognition um, computation. I think this is uh, this is common uh, in no matter physical or virtual uh, environment. And I, I think for AI development, this is also a bottleneck because for now the AI development has also has some some uh, uh, some somehow stuck by by the foreign by the current technology or algorithm. I think one of the problem might be we uh, ignore somehow the human cognition um, modeling or human cognition. Well, lack of human cognition recognition algorithms. So um, this uh, this system could be uh, helpful for not only architectural design uh, process, but also design and also the human recognition um, computation. Yeah, I think that this this is the point and this is the future goal of this research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, yes, uh, thanks uh, for the approach, Professor Philip. Uh, it uh, was very interesting to uh, see the, the other projects that Likai and Kaiho uh, is very uh, uh, interesting uh, what, how you are uh, trying to, to, to have the New, maybe solutions with these algorithms and not only into the speculative world like the virtual world um, but um, I, I would like continue with the um, with the research but um, trying to, to to have new new codes new uh, algorithms uh, to recreate new spaces I'm a uh, very central in recreate experience to share with others. I'm not sure if we can we'll continue using the virtual space in the future or how many years we could continue using the virtual space or the virtuality. I think that is a, a, a big uh, tool for, for us uh, in this moment, exactly. Um, uh, but I, I would like to try to, to make an, an e-read to connecting this uh, virtual experience with more uh, physical experience and uh, starting maybe uh, like this, uh, this both projects are more like a virtual reality or AR or 360 experience, start maybe in, in a museum or a uh, closed space that you can use a, a VR headset. But I uh, told to that uh, we can uh, start thinking the real spaces in creating these uh, natural forms uh, at, at throughout the, the, the new data that the uh, artificial intelligence has and uh, start rethinking in the in a new type of architecture uh, for the future and uh, maybe more interactive maybe more sensibility with others and um, yeah so that's one of my thoughts that i have um thanks philip um professor yuan for the for the for the comments i also think the discussion about the virtual is super fascinating because now we are redefining architecture, right? We are not going back to the whole process. We are kind of thinking about how we can transfer from one image or one geometry to another one, which is already operating on the end result. Um, I'm also really looking forward to have the digital futures as a platform to continue, um, continue my research because the first year when, where I was experimenting with human and um, robot interaction. And then the second year, I think I was doing with, um, with um, more crowd behavior. And then this year, what I'm trying to um, research is on how, again, game engine, right? how you can reach to a goal for 
collective um, uh, fabrication or collective construction. And I'm also really looking forward to have um, the workshop started in the, at the end of the, the month. So um, thanks everyone. Um, before, uh, before we end today's symposium, I would like, also like to invite everyone for the next session, the hybrid forms and virtual architecture. Some of the ideas might be um, discussed in the continuation where um, Yan Chao would moderate with uh, Wang Zigong, Wang Liang, Nero He, and David Eskenazi. Thank you, everyone. Um, have, have a good day and have a good night. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.